Guys, Funtown Timmy here. And Cool Greg. Back with another Spider-Man. <laughs> video. And if you're in Australia, good morning. If you're anywhere else, good afternoon, good night. Whatever comes to you, but it'll be morning by the time this is out. Anyway, so... Let's talk about Spider-Man 2004. Uh, well, personally, I find it to be one of Sam Raimi's best films. It's... What about you, Fun Time Timmy? I feel like it's a... Why do you little sp Spidey like that? I feel like it's a film... It's like saying if you had to tell someone what your favourite Spider-Man movie besides No Way Home, obviously... It, besides No Way Home, I think Spider-Man 2 is probably going to be my favourite for a couple of reasons. We got Doc Ock. Hello, Peter. He was one of the coolest villains. And, and one of the best, who also got his own redemption arc. Yes, and we got a very good actor who was called Alfred Molina, who was in Frozen 1 and 2, and Chocolat. And the meme... Pizza time. pizza time is in that film. It's like oh, that's gonna be such an iconic moment, and he's like, "Whoa, he stole that guy's pizza." <laughs> what do you think? Um, I think those scenes are pretty funny. The humor does take like is up a notch, and it's funny to do that. But also, I like how Peter has his own little struggle within the movie. It's not just. Like how he goes to college and things. And how he's losing his power. My back! Oh, my back! So that is a unique story. I haven't seen much What of. do you think the funniest scene in Spider-Man 2 is? Is that a joke? Either any scene with J. Jonah Jameson or Pizza Time. Either I think it's pizza time or my back. Oh, my yeah. My back. That's pretty funny. But I just love this movie. Like, Peter is struggling. He, he's trying to get to Mary Jane's performance on top of school, on top of being Spider-Man. Then eventually and still he just... his friend. Harry mad at Spider-Man because from the first film. And then he just gives up. How do you feel about him giving up mid-movie? Well, I feel that it's a move that, you know, usually in movies, the hero will lose their powers for a good portion of the movie but then get them back. But this was, like, the first real superhero movie to do that. And, you know, it doesn't just do it for, you know, the plot. It does it to tell a different and more unique story. Yeah, it's sort of telling you... You know, with great power comes with great responsibility. It is a responsibility because you got school, you got friend stuff going on, you got a bunch of personal stuff. I just said personal, and then on top of that, being a superhero, it's like, how can he manage all of that? Yeah. And living in his own apartment, having with a rude guy, rent. Give me rent. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door. Uh, but. Even, like, like, I love how this movie, sure, it's like a sequel, but, you know, usually with sequels, it feels like this has to be made because of the success. Yeah, like, Venom Let the Carnage was good, but it wasn't, like, as good as Venom 2018. And I get the vibe with this movie, but it still feels like the creators have a story to tell with this one, instead of just being, like, Spider-Man's back. But you know More what's, villains. You know what's weird? Um, it's that um when they these kids on the train in Spider Man two see Peter Parker's identity and it's like well, Spider Man's identity as Peter Parker and no one tells anybody. But then here we are, like what? Cause in they're in twenty twenty three in the MCU, so like nineteen. 19 years later, it's all going down. Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Like, why didn't we see that in Spider-Man 2004? Oh, because, see, in that movie, it wouldn't have made sense. Because, like, like, sure, it would have made sense normally. But this is 
you got to think, this is the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie. It's there, goofy, sometimes it don't make sense. And they're like just your average, like, crazy comic book. Spider-Man takes that personally. Hey, I mean, I But I, th I. Well, well for No Way Home, it makes sense because this is a much more. Because in the MCU, it's much more realistic than Tobin's. Yeah, but how do you feel about that transition from like Peter Parker going to meet Octavius, like as this like great scientist, and it's like to almost wanting to kill him and like. And that. Because um, it just well, like I feel it shows just how goes, like, you know sometimes ideas can be the death of somebody. It'd be the death of you. But I think this movie really tells you like, like just because you're a fun loving superhero doesn't mean that you're all fun and loving, don't you think? Sort of, but more that the life of a superhero isn't as easy as someone would think. Yeah, because if you just tell Spider-Man to, like, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, they'll think, oh, Spider-Man, he's a great guy. But when it's our age, it's like, Spider-Man is not just Spider-Man. Like, have you ever seen The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Like, Peter is dealing with so much, him and Gwen breaking up, looking to go to college, and it's just so stressful. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, I feel as if the second movie, instead of just being the soulless cash grab of, for the studio to make a quick, not, well, not a quick buck, but to make money, this doesn't feel like that. This feels like, you know, the next stepping stone in the trilogy. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. But... The only thing I don't like about Spider-Man 2 is that when Harry Osborn um, knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, they don't really, they don't really reveal any details in in the second one. They just all reveal it in the third one, even though he knows at the hour and forty minute mark. So you like, you still have twenty seven minutes left in your movie. Well, that's twenty seven minutes left to fighting Doc Ock and ending the movie, right? Seven minutes credit. But real quick, before we end this, Mary Jane sucks. She's manipulative to Peter from the start to finish. She, like, wants to marry some dude we, who's only in the mood for like five minutes. And on their wedding day, she leaves him for Peter. Yeah, I'm still gonna go in 97. I mean, no, 97. 95%! Spider-Man No Way Home is, also, is always going to be the best Spider-Man movie, and you can't tell me otherwise. Jeez, Raph will be scared of how fast you said that. Um, I'd have to give Spider-Man 2 a solid 84%. See you! Bye.